And now we will be discussing care bundles for surgical site infections. For us to easily grasp surgical site infection prevention. We will divide our discussion into three phase. Phase 1. Or the pre-operative phase. Phase 2. Or the operative phase. And the third and last phase the post-operative. The bundles needs to be considered preoperative prevention of SSI are the following. First. We need to optimize health control risk factors. Such as. Excess weight, malnutrition, hypertension, weakened immune system, smoking. Specially uncontrolled diabetes. In general, complications from surgical wounds are more prevalent in diabetics and healing is impaired when glycemic levels are not well managed. Therefore, ensuring that patient that will undergo surgery needs to have less than 200 mg per dl glucose value. Next management is skin preparation. Performing pre-bathing prior to surgery or what we call operative antiseptic shower or bath decreases skin microbial colony counts. This is an effective way to remove harmful bacteria. On top of that we also have hair removal. In many cases, hair removal is not necessary. When required, single-use head clippers are to be used. No shaving. Razors leave microscopic cuts on the skin that are all potential entry points for bacteria. The next management as part of bundles of care in preventing SSI under the pre-operative phase is the antibiotic prophylaxis. For some surgeries, one of the ways to prevent surgical site infections is give antibiotic as prophylaxis. And what are the things that we need to consider? First, selection and dosage of antibiotic is important. Second, it is also recommended to start administer patients antibiotics within 60 minutes after which reducing it at 180 minutes or after 3 days and lastly discontinuing it the antibiotics within 24 hours is recommended done with our first phase the pre-operative managements moving forward we are now entering our second phase which is the operative phase as part of our care bundle we have the environment in here it is very important that we ensure the sterility of the environment to prevent contamination of our operative site that leads to infection. Which we don't want. Right? Ensuring that operating theater are clean and well sanitized and sterility is maintained for our patients welfare. As part of the environment perspective. We also need to ensure that our theaters are maintained closed. Only less than 10 times per hour is the recommended numbers of door openings. Starting from opening of sterile equipment until surgical wound closure. Next in operative phase we have the surgical equipments. This includes surgical instruments and sterile protective equipments. For instruments, surgical instruments can sterilize by steam under pressure, dry heat, ethylene oxide, or other approved methods. Ensuring that the integrity of instrument sterility is vital. This goes with the personal protective equipment that the healthcare workers gonna use. Ensuring and maintaining that all equipments and materials in or the other are sterile. But on top of this, before handling and wearing PPE, hand hygiene needs to take place. According to Center for Diseases Control or CDC, use of brush for surgical hand scrubs is not necessary. Scrubbing with a brush is associated with an increase in skin cell and bacteria shedding from the hands. And that's what our operative phase is composed. We've come to the last phase which is the post-operative phase. In this phase we need to consider the oxygen and body temperature of our patient to prevent surgical site infection. According to NICE, sufficient oxygen to maintain a hemoglobin saturation of more than 95%. Thus, Hemoglobin saturation maintained above 95% both during and post-operative stage is need for wound healing and prevention of infection. When dealing with body temperature, maintaining normothermia is vital. We need to maintain temperature between 36 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius during the entire phase. Pre-operative and post-operative warming using body warmer and heating blanket maintain normothermia is recommended. And lastly for this last and post-operative phase we have the incisional site care. 
taking into consideration proper attention and care to our patient's post-operative site is crucial. It is recommended for a surgical incision site to be covered with sterile dressing for 24 to 48 hours. On the other hand if the wound is left for delayed closure or healing by secondary intention, it is packed with sterile moist gauze and covered by sterile dressing. In changing wound dressing ensure that hand hygiene and proper wearing of sterile PPE to ensure patients protect for possible infection and vice versa. And changing of dressing we need to use strict sterile technique at all times. This is the management that we need for our last phase which is post-operative phase. To wrap it up. And to give each and every one the bigger picture of surgical site infection prevention through its care bundle here are the following. Under pre-operative phase. We need to optimize our patient's health. Give particular to skin preparation. And take into consideration proper administration of antibiotics as prophylaxis. Next. Under our operative phase. We need to ensure the safety of our or environment. And its various surgical equipments. And finally under the post-operative phase. The management and care that will complete our SSI bundle are. Proper oxygenation and body temperature. And last but not the least we need to perform properly incision site care. Perform this care bundle and we can assure each and every one that we will decrease and possibly eliminate surgical site infection in our institution. Thank you for listening guys. Stay focused.